Just one message. Pre-reading questions. 1. What is this just one message? 2. What does the Bible say about it? 3. What does the Quran say about it? 4. What is your opinion about it? Straight to the point. After the creation of Adam, just one original message has been repeatedly delivered to mankind throughout the history of humanity. The true God is only one. Worship him alone and keep his commandments. Thus, to remind people about it and bring them back on track, many prophets and messengers including Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad were sent by the only true God to convey this message. The true God, the Creator sent Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad to convey God is one. God sent these major prophets as well as many other prophets and messengers to accomplish several tasks and missions, some of which are 1. To receive guidance from God and deliver it to people. 2. To convey the message that God is one. 3. To be role models to their people. 4. To instruct their people to fear God and keep his commandments. 5. To teach their followers important religious and moral tenets and worldly matters. 6. To guide those who deviated, disobeyed God, or worshipped other gods or idols. Seven, to tell people about their final destination, the last day, and what leads to paradise or hellfire. It is the same God who created and sent those prophets and messengers. He is the creator of all humans, all animals, and all objects. It is this one true God who created the whole universe, including nature, and all it contains. He is the creator of life, death, and life after death. The oneness of this true God, the Creator, is clearly evident and easily traceable in the holy scriptures of the Jews, Christians, Muslims, and others. Studying the concept of God in the Bible and the Quran sincerely and objectively, a sincere seeker of the truth would be able to discern the unique qualities belonging to the true God only. Some of the qualities that distinguish this only true God from others who claim to be God are 1. This true God is creator, not created. 2. This true God is one, not three or more. He has no partners nor equals. 3. This one true God is invisible, no one can see him in this life. He is not physically manifested or incarnated in other forms. 4. This one true God is eternal, he does not die or change. 5. This one true God is not in need of anyone like a mother, a wife, or a son, or anything like food, drink, or help. But others are in need of him. 6. This one true God is unique in his attributes, no one is like him. No human or animal descriptions can be attributed to him. We can use these criteria and qualities, as well as other ones belonging to him alone, in examining and rejecting any claims of being God. Now let me turn to discuss the one message mentioned above and cite some of the biblical and Quranic verses confirming the oneness of God. But before that, I would like to share with you this thought. Some Christians might wonder, it is obvious that God is one. We believe in one God. So, what is the point? However, based on a great deal of reading and studying materials on Christianity and dialogues with many Christians, I came to understand that they perceive this one God to include 1 God the Father, 2 God the Son, 3 God the Holy Spirit. So, based on common sense and simple logic, a sincere and honest seeker of the truth could reason. What do you mean by saying that God is one, while you refer to three gods? Is God one in three or three and one, one in three or three and one? In addition to that, and according to Christian dogmas, these three gods have different identities, images, roles, and functions. 1. God the Father equals the Creator. 2. God the Son equals the Savior. 3. God the Holy Spirit equals the Counselor. By the way, if Jesus, God the Son, or Son of God, is really God or part of the one God, doesn't this contradict what the Bible itself reports that no one can see God, nor hear his voice? The Bible states, 1. You have never heard his voice nor seen his face. John 5, 37. 2. No one has ever seen him, and no one can see him. 1 Timothy 6, 16. 3. No one can see me and stay alive. Exodus 33, 20. Based on these and other biblical texts, I sincerely and honestly ask, how can we reconcile the dogma that Jesus is God and the biblical testimony that no one has ever seen God, nor heard his voice? Didn't the Jews at his time, his family, and his followers see Jesus, God the Son, as some believe, and hear his voice? 
Is there any secret or hidden purpose concerning the truth about God? In the Bible, the true God emphatically testifies, I am the Lord, and there is no other God. I have not spoken in secret or kept my purpose hidden. I am the Lord, and I speak the truth, I make known what is right. Isaiah 45, 19. So, what is the truth? Please reread the verse and think about it. Now, let us take off on a journey of seeking the truth about the one true God in the Bible and the Quran. At the end of this journey and after your critical, sincere, honest, and thoughtful reading of this booklet and particularly the verses cited below, I would like to know your reactions or views. To be as objective as possible, I cite the verses without any comment. Please read the following verses carefully, critically and without any preconceptions. The one true God in the Bible, the Old Testament. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Has not the one God made and sustained for us the spirit of life? Malachi 2, 15. You may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Saviour. Isaiah 43, 10-11. I am the first and I am the last, besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Isaiah 44, 6. And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Saviour, there is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved, to me every knee shall bow. Isaiah 45, 21-23. These are just some verses from the Old Testament. Can you think of other similar ones? The one true God in the Bible, the New Testament. One came and said unto him, Good Master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he, Jesus, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. Matthew 19, 16-17, in King James Version. Now this is life eternal, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 3. Worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. Matthew 4, 10. Hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mark 12, 29. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5. Can you recall other verses confirming that God is only one? Not three. The one true God in the Quran. Say, he is Allah, the one, Allah, the eternal, absolute, he begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like unto him. 112, 1-4, there is no God but I, so worship me. 21, 25, they disbelieve who say, Allah, God, is one of three, for there is no God except one God. If they desist not from their word, of blasphemy, verily, a grievous chastisement will befall the disbelievers among them. 5, 73, can there be another God besides Allah, God? Nay, most of them know not. 27, 61. Can there be another God besides Allah, God? High as Allah above what they associate with him. 27, 63. Can there be another God besides Allah, God? Say, bring forth your proof, if ye are telling the truth. 27, 64. Indeed, this message concerning the oneness of God, i.e., Tawheed in Arabic, is the essential theme of the Quran. Conclusions. These verses as well as hundreds of similar pieces of evidence in the Bible and the Quran confirm this one, eternal message that the true God is only one. Turn to me now and be saved, people all over the world. I am the only God there is. Isaiah 45, 22. Not only does the Bible affirm that God is only one, but it also reveals that the true God, the Creator, is the only Savior. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Isaiah 43 10 to 11. So, according to this affirmation, all other supposed gods or deities like Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Krishna, or Buddha are neither gods nor manifestations of the one true God. It was because of such false beliefs that after the Jews worshipped other gods, the Lord's anger burned against them. Numbers 25, 3, likewise, Moses destroyed the golden calf. On the other hand, the Essenes, an early Christian Unitarian community, Endure torture and persecution because they refuse to exchange Jesus' monotheistic teachings for the Pauline innovation of the Trinity. To sum up, all God's prophets including Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad were sent by the same God, the Creator, to convey the same message. The true God is only one. Worship Him alone and keep His commandments. And since those prophets and messengers preached the same one message, their religion must be the same one. So, what is the religion of those prophets and messengers? Submission to the will of God is the essence of the message of those prophets. This word submission means Islam in Arabic. The Quran does confirm that Islam is the true religion of all God's prophets and messengers. This Quranic fact is also traceable in the Bible itself. And this is what will be discussed in the upcoming booklet, God Willing.
Ultimately, to attain salvation, we must receive and believe in the above-mentioned message willingly and wholeheartedly. Nevertheless, doing this is not enough. We must also believe in all God's true prophets, including Prophet Muhammad, and follow their true guidance and teachings. This is the gateway to a happy, eternal life. So, if you are a sincere seeker of truth and a lover of salvation, you might like to consider this no before it is too late. Before death. It can be soon. Who knows? One more thing. A final thought. Those who are sincere, honest, serious, objective, and open-minded in seeking the truth, and after thinking critically about this one message, they may ask questions like. So, what is the truth? What can I do? You can sincerely believe in your only true God, Allah, believe in his last messenger, and utter the following. I testify that there is no God worthy of worship but the one true God, Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of God, Allah. This testimony is the first step on the way to eternal life and the real key to the gate of paradise. If you decide to take this way, you can contact your Muslim friend, the nearest Islamic center, or me, I will be very happy to help. Yes, you can do it. Brief definitions of major Islamic terms. Allah. The proper name of the one true God, the Creator. Allah is the true God of all mankind, Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, etc. Muhammad. The last prophet of the one true God, Allah. Islam. Submission to the will of the Creator, the true God, Allah. One can attain real happiness and peace of mind only through submission and obedience to the true God. Muslim. One who submits to the will of the true God, Allah, the Creator. Quran. The word of God revealed to Prophet Muhammad.